Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where so many great fights have gone on through the years for our main event. Scheduled for 12 rounds in the head. And we are underway for this scheduled 12-rounder. I shake it off. Teddy, when a southpaw faces an orthodox fighter, he has some natural advantages. But one of them just comes from the fight that the righty doesn't see a lot of lefties, right? Well, that's exactly right. He doesn't have much time to practice against the southpaw, so it doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel comfortable before you know it. You're not doing things that you should be doing. He got hit, but he sends it right back. Right hand downstairs. Back to basics here, as you can see the jab becoming a key instrument for him. Boxing 101. You have an opponent walking in. You want to stay on the outside? Use that jab. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. Wow, is he defensively sound. He scores with the jab. Cut that just crashed home. Return to sender. He gives him back one of his own. Piercing jab. Missed the target with that hook. Ten seconds remaining in this round. Little head hunting with the left. Joe and Teddy with you here in between rounds. A round in which, boy, he really just dominated his opponent. Teddy, he's got to think things could be coming to a sensational ending for him when he gets off to school here. Well, he's showing that to you right now. I'm looking at him right now, and he's starting to get up. There's a couple seconds left. There's probably five seconds left before he has to get up, and he's getting up early. That shows you right what you're talking about. He can't. He's chomping at the bid. He's confident. Well played, straight right hand. Good job snapping out that jab. You know, if you're watching Muhammad Ali, you know you need a jab to move on the outside. But if you're coming forward, you need a jab, and there's proof of it. Watch that punch. Able to time that left hand and score with it. Able to land another power shot early on here, Teddy. Does he have to worry about trying to keep up this pace? No, I don't think so. If he keeps at this pace, he's not going to be around to worry. Keep working the body. Solid left hand. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Not much action as he just ties up. Good body shot, the right hand came home. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. He tried to nab him up top but was unable to connect. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. You can almost see it just by the way a fighter sits down on their stool at the end of a round. As we come to the end of this round, you can tell that he's full of confidence and he can't wait to get right back out there and continue doing what he's doing. Well, you're right. The first thing that I notice is his back's not leaning against the corner peg. You know, that's a defeated fighter. That's a fighter. He don't want to go back. Something bad happened to him. You know, he's leaning back like that. You have to pick him up from the stool. He's got all his weight forward. He can't wait to get going. You know that he's positive. You know that he had a good round. Good job! A 
Good block. Targeting that overhand left. We're seeing a lot of work to the body here early on by him. Teddy, is that a certain mentality, these guys that commit to being a body puncher? Yeah, because they understand that the body punching, you know, that's not something that's glorious. That's not something that, you know, like a great left hook on the chin, bang, it gets results right away. They understand that that's something that pays off later and something you got to start early and stay with. Some serious damage done on that power shot to the head. Dropped his hand, paid a price. No, his opponent got away from that uppercut. Committing to the work downstairs with the left. Left to the body. Takes one to give one. He comes back with a right hand. And that's the end of round three. Hasn't been a lot of distinct action so far that would give anybody a commanding lead in this fight. Although on Teddy's scorecards, you can see that he is up a round after three rounds. Trying to go downstairs, but off target. Blocks that punch. He got all into that one. That was a solid uppercut. Accurate uppercut after taking a shot of his own. Good step back counter punch there. Keep this moving. is brilliant Keep defense moving. we're seeing here every which way. Blocking punches, moving well, parrying punches away. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Now he has to connect the offense a little bit better. He scores with the left. Halfway through this round. Digging in with a left to the gut. well up top keep that head moving miss targeted he has his target he lands a straight right uppercut back to the body and now he brings the left hand upstairs Well, you can just tell that he's unable to keep up this kind of a pace early on. You can see that these punches aren't what they were. So that's part of the equation. You go out there and you can chuck leather at your opponent, but your opponent, he can handle it if he wants to. He can deflect it, and then he starts coming back with his own. And then what happens? You get tired? You start giving up? Good action throughout. We'll see if it keeps up in this round of what has been... A very Keep even fight. That's a big right hand there. Solid left. Teddy, explain this to me. Hey, this fighter was just staggered and stunned. Now all of a sudden he's defending beautifully. Yeah, because he's on instincts now. Before he was thinking, he was overthinking. That happens out in life in a lot of places. And now he's not. Now just naturally, instinctively, survival mode is there. He's doing all the things, Joe, that he was taught in the gym. Things he couldn't do before because he was worried about doing them. He had too many things clogging his head. And now just wasting everybody's time holding on. Hey, keep your hands up. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counter puncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Jump on it, jump on it right now. Teddy, you gotta 
to like this because he's using that jab the way you like him to. Especially when you're being aggressive. You walk in, you want to walk in where the guy can't see you coming. That jab blinds your opponents. Very nice work to the head. The right hand landed. Lands flush with the combination upstairs. Keep moves. Keep that moves. was off the mark. Coming to the end of round number five, last ten seconds. Come on. I don't know, Teddy. It just feels like one of those nights, one of those fights where somebody's getting hurt, where this is not going to the judges' scorecards. I feel like I'm in Coney Island watching one of those hot dog eating contests where somebody's going to try to eat 50 of them, 60 of them. In other words, he's not worried how he's going to feel at the end of the night. You know, many times we talk about the fact that, hey, at least he's throwing punches, but that's all you can say in this case because he's not landing many of these. No, they're being blocked or they're missing. They're definitely not landing clean, and you have to give credit to the other fighter being that good defensively. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Nice work, the left hand to the head. He scores with the jab there. You know, Joe, a lot of times you think about a jab being used by an outside guy, but to get inside, you need a cover. And there, right there, was the cover. Halfway through round six. And now he's acting like a fighter. Coming back with the right hand after getting scored upon. Just off the mark with that punch. Focus. Able to place the right hand in there. Snaps that jab out. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. I like this kind of defense, Teddy. I like this kind of guy that just says, go ahead. You think you can try to hit me up top. You can't. Great movement. A very good movement, very good vision. He sees everything. To do this, you have to be very calm. He's very calm. He's very in control. And the bell rings, signifying the end of the round. I think even the casual observer, the guy who doesn't watch a lot of boxing, can look at this right now and tell you he's winning this fight with ease. Yeah, I'm not worried about the casual observer. I'm worried about the so-called professional oh, judge. Time and time again, he showed me that he does not know what he's watching sometimes. But you're right. In this case, it would be hard, almost impossible, to argue for the other fighter. That's a big, big shot he just scored with. And why did he score? Because he created range, created distance, created a hole, and he filled that hole. A well-placed left hand up top. Good flush shot upstairs. Back at him with a left hand. Scores big with. Oh, uh, things opened up and he was able to place the right hand well. Big shot. He was standing up to it, but now he goes down for the first time. a lot of credit for even getting up from that knockdown but he still has to impress and move forward here yeah i applaud him i give him credit but i also recognize that he's in good shape that's one of the reasons he got up plus shot the left hand came in nice block that time it was intended to the head Oh, 
Well, he's committed to the left hand and it's paying off here. <gasps> Keep moving. Keep moving. Ten seconds to go in the seventh. Yeah, that's it. Right and that's the end of round seven. So as you can see on Teddy's scorecard, this for the time being is a one-sided fight. Most would say, I don't see it changing at all. But Teddy, anything can happen in this game. Yeah, it's kind of like being in a casino. You know, you're ahead, you got all those chips in front of you. It's time to walk away from the table. Well, he can't walk away from the table, but it's time to pull back on his bets a little bit. You know, keep going, but pull back a little bit. Don't get careless. So he went down earlier, and yet he's still fighting with the same kind of style, the same kind of disposition he was fighting with before the knockdown. If I'm the opponent, maybe that's a sign to me that, hey, maybe I didn't hurt the guy that much. Or maybe it's a sign that this son of a gun is just very predictable. He can't change. And maybe I'm going to have a party tonight because I'm going to keep catching with the same thing until he takes it away from me. That's a good point. That's a clean shot able to get in. Oh, a big shot comes home for him. He was able to get up and continue on last time. Now he goes down again. One, two, three, four, five. So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? Joe, one of the ways he survives is if he's been taught. Have good habits. Have good fundamentals been put there. You're going to find out right now. He needs them right now. Good defense just covering up down low. That's a serious power punch he just landed to the head. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hard charging with that right hand. And yet another big shot comes in. That was a big shot that floored him, and it's a big shot that may end him right here. That looked like the great pitch of great Maddox. His sinker ball. Boy, it went down quick. Does it unable to beat the count of 10 a knockout in the books for the official particulars we send it up to our ring announcer That's how you end a fight right there. Yes, he was controlling throughout, but he made a good, clean finish with the knockout. Yeah, as a trainer, you want to know, can a guy punch? Can a guy defend? You know, can a guy...